I think I'm live. Hello everyone. Thank you for joining. My name is Mikhailo Alexeyenko and uh, today I will be streaming. Uh, today I will be streaming my uh, Puzzle Rush and Blitz, which I don't think I did before. And it's very hard to commentate the Puzzle Rush because you have to be very quick. So I hope you would watch and enjoy. And then I'm gonna play for Team Ukraine in the World Championship with the, uh, against the team of Kazakhstan, which apparently is a very strong one. Uh, you can see on my other tab uh, here, there's gonna be a match, Team Kazakhstan, Team Ukraine. I'm playing for Team Ukraine. We're gonna play uh, uh, two games with one minute plus one second. So uh, that kind of bullet that I like um because well i get one second increment and i don't have to like click on stuff very quickly i just can if i have a big advantage i can convert it so with one minute it would be a little bit hard to um to commentate although i will do my best for sure and then in 20 minutes after that blitz in uh, about half an hour after my stream uh, starts which is a minute ago uh, there would be a 5 plus 3 second two games with a decent opponent or it is possible that maybe even stronger opponent and uh, and uh, I would I would definitely commentate okay good evening Mark um, go team Ukraine thank you Mark all right so what I'm gonna do now yesterday and before that I was doing some engine stuff now I'm gonna play myself and I'm gonna do one puzzle rush which I haven't done in quite some time. I think maybe I would have to move my face away uh, from... Uh, but you can see the, the today... Ah, today I did it, 35, but all time I had 45 record. So let's see how I do tonight because I think... I'm not a very of big opinion of puzzle rush, but, uh, but for a blitz, before a blitz game training, that's, that's a good one. So we have a game starting in eight minutes. So I'm gonna do one puzzle rush. All right, so just take the rook, I guess. Here, check and takes. All right, here, check and mate. Usually it's check and mate or mate in one immediately. Like this one, takes and takes. That's mate. What's this knight, d3 takes the queen. Usually it's back rank, it's not back rank. What do I do? Take. And now take. Okay, this one was surprising. The queen is trapped in the middle of the board. Very good. Knight is three. It's mate. Arrgh. Maybe I need a better mouse. Okay, so I can take this bishop and then take this bishop. All right. What's this? What's this? I don't see when do I take the rook. I should take the rook, I guess. And I should go to h8, which is safe. All right, I'm queen down, so there must be a mate. Check. Check. Uh, check. I didn't see the mate, but I hope it was there. Here it's just a fork. Here we just go give checkmate. Queen h7, queen h8, rook e1 and e8 was hanging. Well, now I just take the bishop and uh, I suppose I take the rook. All right, what is this? Just pinning the queen. That is winning. I would read your comments later. Rook b2, I'm guessing, and takes just one pawn, but that's enough. What's this? Rook g1 or rook g2, what's the difference? F takes, oh my goodness, that's way too long. That's way too long, what should I do? I'm gonna go rook g2, wrong, whoopsie. Now I trap the queen and I win a piece. Okay, come on, this is queen takes g5, this is well known. All right, back rank issues, so check, takes, oh come on. Oh, come on, I waste so much time on this one. Queen e7, what's this? Bishop g4 unprotected, f2, back rank problem. All right, here, same problem, check, check, mate. Um, po, 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 where's the mate? Ah, oh, queen f5, of course I met queen f5 and pawn takes. Eh. Okay, how do I win this one? I give a check, I give a check and I take the rook. Rook c2 undefended. What else is there? Just go to f6, I guess. Just go to f6 and win. Okay. What's this? d6 and uh, knight b5. Okay. What's this? What is this? I don't see a win yet. 
Ah, that's too long. Rook e4. And uh, pu, 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 pu. queen b3? No, not queen b3. Where's my win? Where's my win? Check, of course, of course. Okay. Bishop takes f6 is an easier winning a piece. What is this? Check and then take the bishop. Okay, this is mate in two. What is this? Knight takes with the tempo and then takes and now knight should run away like this, like this, okay? Uh, queen f6, queen g7. Hmm. Queen f7 maybe immediately, yes. And now just takes. All right. I need my queen on h3. Do I have time? No, I just take the queen. Oh, king g1. Ouch, I did not see that one. Where's my win? Queen e2. And rook f3. Whew, that was a hard one. c4. Mm. Check, check, check. Eh, takes. Okay. This is this one, winning the queen. Really? One more move? Oh, come on. D8 is hanging. Long castle. What else can I do? Knight takes b7. Just take the pawn. Okay. Knight d5 takes bishop e6, takes the queen and take the rook. Okay. Didn't want me to take. So takes and queen f5. This is very typical with the bishop on f6. Knight to b4. Where's my mate? I don't see a mate. Rook on c4 is weak. There's, ah, oh, of course, check, check and takes and protect the rook. Rook c5 and pawn ending is a win. Oh, come on, that's too easy. Rook g2, if I take, I have to do this. And I have to do this and I have to do this. And rook back, check and takes, 42, which is not bad. Queen f8, queen g8 and where's my win? Queen h6, of course. Bishop e5, rook takes e5, queen d4 takes. And now uh, take, check, ah, wrong. Okay, sorry I didn't have time to read your comments. Any advice on how to improve online blitz? Um, simple tactics. Can I give a link to championship of Kazakhstan versus Ukraine? One second. That's a good point. Uh, I think this is the link. You can just, I'm just going to copy it in the chat. I think if you just go like this, you should be able to see it, but I'm not sure I never watched one. Uh, Mihailo starts in five minutes. The match is going to be bloody. More than 200 boards already. Thank you, Alexander. Alexei Ostrovsky, dobry večer. Tak, dvi hvilene zalešilas. Two more minutes and uh, in two minutes uh, I would play. So no time for another puzzle rush. Okay. Two and a half minutes, maybe. Yeah, I'm not sure how many mistakes do they allow in in that uh, in the puzzle rush. I would do more when uh, uh, after the game. Okay. Uh, do you have any questions? Let me see. No, no more questions yet. How do um, any advice on how to improve online blitz? I'm not an expert in that because I don't have a good online blitz rating. Uh, my nickname is Hitaman, Hit Man, Hit Man. Is there any price? Price for what? Um, price to to see? I don't think. I don't think it's it's like that. Okay, so I'm I'm gonna make my video slightly bigger now. Maybe like this. I hope you will both see the times on the clock. Online blitz. Usually it's just practice, practice, practice. And definitely very, very simple tactics is a good improvement for your blitz. However, it could be harmful to your long time controls. It could be harmful. Because if you're doing only simple tactics, you always assume you are winning. You barely think for your opponent. In blitz, you don't often have to think for your opponent. You just have to act quickly and see uh, uh, tactics if it's right, right in front of you. So for now, where am I? Oh yeah, see my rating. Uh, I'm, I think I'm only GM in my team. No, Kirill Shevchenko is playing. And who is this? I'm not sure. I'm not familiar with the nickname. Anton Korobov. Okay. Yeah, Anton is playing. Very good. 
Anton is one of the best rapid players in the world, by the way. But he's gonna play Blitz today. Maybe rapid in the evening. We all play for free and to promote our team and our nation. So that's what we do. So Anton has 2700, 2777 and my rating is 2499. So I don't have a very go good Blitz rating uh, given my, uh, let's say, status. But uh, simple tactics is, is the way to improve your Blitz rating. And here we go in 6, 5, 4... Oh, I'm playing same level player, so it would be very difficult to commentate. So, but I'll do my best, of course. Okay, d4. I like to play more solid chess in Blitz because people after e4 they like to choose some some sidelines and b4 bishop d2 solid line if takes queen takes bishop so i'm gonna just take i'm gonna put the bishop on b2 i'm gonna put the knight on f3 i'm gonna castle i'm gonna go queen d3 i'm gonna go e4 e5 i think is necessary and now I'm gonna just do knight bd2. I'm gonna put all my pieces to the center. Rook a to d1. Rook f to e1. Rook f to e1. I'm not sure what to do next, but I'm not pushing d5 today. And now h3 seems like a useful move or knight h4. I'm just going to f5. Let me see. So if pawn... Ah, I cannot draw arrows. I did not know that. g6 weakens the king side a little bit maybe i should move start moving the queen there it's very attacking the king is easy uh hold on i don't see my time why is that i don't see my time oh, it's, i see that i have 40 seconds okay 41 knight there really okay i'm gonna move this knight to f3 now i'm just moving all my pieces to the king side we'll see what happens Rook e8, knight g5, b3. To be honest, I forgot that pawn was hanging. My attention is fully on the king side. Queen h6, bishop h3 are my next moves. And then hopefully, um, hopefully my rook from d file and bishop from h3 would be crushing. Bishop goes to h3. Mm. Mm, should I take knight g5, f6 and come back? No. Okay, this knight did its duty. I'm coming back. I'm going to e3 now. f6. Okay, I'm going to d5. I'm aiming for f6 square. c takes d. e6 square, I mean. The c file is open. I want to keep the queens because the king is weak in black's position. c, d, knight takes. Uh, f, okay, bishop, no, f3. Solid, but not so good. e6 is weak. What do I do next? King g2. Um, double rooks, I suppose. And f4. And then I'm going to try to get to e6 square. f4. f5. I want to put my knight on e6 badly. Knight goes to e6. And then I improve my bishop. And then I improve my bishop. And then I go for the king, and then I uh, take, and then I push. I don't calculate, I'm just attacking. I'm not sure if it would work out. Double rooks, I'm coming to f7. Knight, oh my goodness, I blundered that. Okay, um, bishop f7, um, king goes, really? Queen d4, I'm pinning, rook h1. Queen back to d2. I'm not sure what I'm doing. Rook f5 is my next move. Queen e2 is my next move. Oh, he just took my bishop. Yep. I'm gonna lose this one. I'm gonna lose this one, of course. No, this is completely losing. I'm just gonna resign. Hold on a second. I need to. I didn't see my time. I need to. I lost. Sorry, I had such a great position, but again, it's really difficult to annotate, to commentate when. All right, e4, Sicilian, let's say. Let's go for Sicilian. 
Taiman of Sicilian. E3 is the most play. Queen F3 is the main line that people play. Uh, I'm ready to go to an endgame. I'm ready for it. Should goes to B7. Knight goes to C6. Rook goes to C8. I'm gonna get two bishop advantage. I'm not sure how to complete the development yet. H6 is a useful move always in this position. I could go knight C4 right now. F6 is a good move. I'm just keeping it solid. Really doubling rooks. Rook G8. I don't care about the H file. I will be focused on the king side now. Check on queen side, of course. I meant. Now I take the bishop. Now I come back to e7, and my next move would be king f7 and d5. Rook d8, and d5 is my plan. Or maybe b4. Rook goes to d8, d5 is my plan. Or a5, b4. Oh, b4 right now. I'm going for the c file. All right, now I go e5. If knight to d5, that pawn would be lost. If not, I keep pushing. I will push d5 myself. Really? Takes, takes. Okay. Rook c5. c takes b4. Rook takes d5. And hopefully the central pawns would decide. Bishop c3. Okay. Rook b5. a3 d5. Rook c8. Should, uh, I think I can do a5 and d4, but I'm not sure. So king e6 is a useful move. Bishop d2, rook b to b8. Takes, takes. Yeah, I thought I had a good position. Apparently it's not so good. Should I go takes, takes and a5? Looks a little risky. No. It's bishop d6. Takes, takes, rook c1, I guess, is his plan. Yeah. Mm, king goes to c6. I need to stop his possible possible b pawn. Looks like a draw to me. g6, f5 is the plan for me. Maybe I should try doing that. Where's that bishop going? g6. Bishop b8, it would be trapped. f5. So I'm trying to play for a win here. E4. Really? Takes. Bishop G7. D4 is unstoppable. Bishop back to F8, stopping A4. King D5. Mm. What do I do next? Yeah, I oh, really? I'm gonna move my bishop to g5. d3. King c3. Check. Mm, attack. I need my king on d4, but bishop f2 was there. And now check again. And d2 is winning. Come on, really? Really, but we have increment. Yeah, okay. Okay, that was a good win. I'm happy about this win. 42 points of rating. Why so much? Oh, maybe he has a higher blitz rating, uh, bullet rating than, than it's shown. I could not have gotten... 42 points or maybe they change the coefficients maybe that's that's the the thing 
Okay, so next match is, is happening. We'll, we'll see what is the result now. Hold on, how do I see it? I'm closing my game and I'm checking the score. Ukraine is winning and how can I observe this game? I'm not sure. I'm not sure how can I can observe this one. So let's see, maybe you had some questions. Any advice about learning chess openings and studying them? Because it seems to me that preparing clients could waste time and face another situation in the real game. Oh, Valery joined and played too. Very good. We'll see it. Thank you, Valery. I, I didn't see the, your comment. Um, advice about learning chess openings. Oh, it really depends on the level, on the time you have. Um, what advice should I give you? First of all, you need to find an opening that you like and enjoy. And um, you can try it in Blitz games. And if you like what you get, you can go ahead and study it. Because I had unpleasant experience studying an uh, opening that didn't suit me. And I lost lots of time, money and rating on it. And another opening I studied, I didn't know much. It just was not really good, but it worked fantastically. So I don't have a clear recipe here, but what I do recommend is for sure, the best way to study a new opening is to purchase a book, relatively modern book by a decent GM. And the reason for that is uh, usually uh, the author, if he, she wants to do a good job, um, the main ideas of the opening are explained with words, which is very important to understand uh, to understand the positions that you are playing. These days, people uh, people uh, using uh, okay, we won. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna close this one. I think we won. All the matches have finished. Anton won against Denis Makhnyov. I don't know the guy. And now the next one starts right here. I'm gonna click join. And it starts in really seven minutes. Oh wow, it's so fast. Okay, and that should be five plus two, not five plus three, my apologies. The best way to study an opening is, is a book, but uh, you should study the book, not just lie on the bed and read the book. You should study it. What it means, you open the main line, you put the pieces on the board, ideally. Well, most of people using uh, screen uh, positions, uh, positions on the screen. And uh, for some reason, my Oops. oh my goodness. Sorry, I know everything is good. Okay. Um, you study it, you, you create a PGN and, uh, and um, sorry, I need to check my stream. Uh, you create a PGN and you look at the positions with your own eyes, not through stockfishes or LC0's eyes. You have to understand the position yourself and uh, for that, uh, you, need to, you need to turn off your engine, basically. Turn off your engine, look with your own eyes, what moves do you like, what, is, uh, what do you like there. Suggest so why not this move. Okay, Valeri won two games, opponent was lower rated. Does playing Blitz improve your chess? Uh, yes and no. Um, it improves your speed of thinking, which is great. You in time trouble, you'll be you'll be amazing. Like Grischuk, for example, he's constantly in time trouble, but he's one of the best blitz players in the world, and so he feels very comfortable in the time trouble. So it helps you think quicker, faster, and uh, it uh, if you play a lot of blitz successfully, your confidence is very high, and uh, you can, and that's very important for short time control. However. It can harm your classical play because uh, in classical play, what you need to do is you need to take your time. You need to understand what your opponent wants to do. You cannot jump to conclusions. So for example, I find puzzle rush to be helpful for blitz and for rapid, 
hold on, how much time do I have? But I find it harmful for, uh, for a long game because you assume you're winning, you don't look for moves for your opponent, that's not a skill you want to, uh, to have in, uh, in a long game. You need to be very careful in your calculation. So in classical chess, precision of calculation is more important. In blitz, the speed is way more important. You could be wrong in your tactics, but your opponent will not have time to, to understand why you were wrong. Okay. I think I have time for one more puzzle rush, three minute puzzle rush. I never done it before, by the way. I never done this three minute puzzle rush and I think it seems opponent will be overrated too. My question is, Sedat, oh, hi Sedat. Uh, my question is, would you finish your book? My students also ask which tactics book you advise. Uh, uh, yes, I'm working on, on a book. Thank you for asking. Um, cannot say when, when it's going to be published. It's still in uh, progress. Which tactics book do you advise? Uh, again, it depends on the, on the level of, of a player. Uh, my understanding is that uh, a good way uh, to understand whether a book suits you is how much time one puzzle takes you. So any book could be useful if you study it properly. Again, if you want to improve your blitz, you take children's books on chess and you do hundreds of positions every day. And then you'll be very good in blitz because you would see tactics instantaneously, very simple one. But if you want to become better at over the board long time control, they don't give titles for blitz, at least for now. Uh, uh, you need to study the tactics over the board and you need to write down the solution and only then you compare it to the to the book and uh, that's how you improve your calculation over the board difficult calculation okay the game starts in two minutes so probably i will just answer your questions instead of uh, playing uh, puzzle rush mm. in my estimate uh, uh, a book shouldn't be too hard it should and shouldn't be too easy if it's too easy, you're not improving. If it's too hard, you're just depressed and disappointed. All right. So uh, lots of books on tactics these days have different levels, usually three. And so everyone can find whatever they want to. Um, but my estimate is it's not the book. It's the way you study it. And uh, you need to find the books that suits the level. So it should be, should, uh, you should occasionally make mistakes. If you do all the all the uh, positions correctly, oh, well, maybe it's too easy. Maybe you should step up a level. And if you fail 50%, that seems like a too difficult book yet. So that would be my answer to you, Sadat. Sanjay Ramesh is asking, is it less useful reading a chess-based book over a real book with a board and pieces? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of old school. Uh, I prefer chess board and pieces. Because if you read a book from your screen, you, the point is you shouldn't read a book. You should study a book. Study. It means every diagram you should try to solve it. If you just read it like a novel, when you're relaxed and lying on the bed, uh, it's not efficient. You're, you're reading, you're enjoying yourself, you're not improving. All right. Valeria asks, how much time per tactics is okay? Uh, it seems when you're taking 30 minutes per tactic, it's too, too long. For uh, end game studies, 15 minutes is a good time, but um, up to 10 minutes for a tactical puzzle. More than 10, probably too difficult. Okay. It's 40 seconds I have. It seems uh, so speaking about a book, I guess it will be more helpful to write as if it is academic mathematical book. I guess based on your background, it will be easy to you because many books dep depend or assume prior knowledge. They also assume that the reader is a French chess player, not as a tutor writing to a student. Okay, thank you for, for your thoughts. Um, all right, 15 minutes, 15 seconds. Okay, that's not a good sign if I don't see it. 
uh, if I think I have um, minutes, not seconds. All right, three, two, one, let's go. Who's my opponent? This time I'm gonna go e4. 20, oh my God, I'm playing much higher FM. I'm not sure who that is. From Kazakhstan, probably some young star, okay. Bishop c4. Usually they go bishop c5, c3, and I like this line. Although I studied it quite some time, I in blitz I don't play it well. People play something I didn't expect, and uh, yeah, and I didn't revise my analysis for quite some time, so let's see how it goes. This is all theory so far. There are many, many top level games here. Knight takes c3. I don't remember this. Ah, oh, yes, right, f6 now. Takes, takes, bishop e2. Six, takes. Bishop e2. Rook e8, castle. Many games for this, exactly this position on, on highest level. Wesley so played. King h8, never analyzed that move. Ah, I should not have said that. <laughs> All right. The whole point of this position is we're fighting over e5 square. King h8 moves the king to a secure location. So I need to make a useful move now. Need to make a useful move. I think a4 is a useful move in this position. Just for black to keep an eye on a5 all the time. Rook b1 is a, another useful move that I may do. So if black moves the knight from c6, I'm putting my knight on e5. That's the, the point. a6, okay. So now I wanna go rook b1 to put pressure on that bishop a little bit. Bishop g6, I'm not scared, so rook to b1. I'm not exactly 100% sure what my next move is. It could be knight g5. Oh, okay. Bishop d3. I'm ready to exchange some pieces. Okay. So the whole problem for black, at least as far as I see this one, is that bishop from b6 has no good place to go. Knight from c6, if it moves, I immediately go to e5. So hopefully I should keep my knight ready to go. Queen e6. Now rook f3 is clearly being planned as the capture. So I can go knight g5 and exchange a queen. Let's do it. Knight g5. Well, queen g8 looks... Oh, really? Queen g8. Okay. Usually f4. If I get to go f4, that's a good place to start because then I would get... Let's go. f4. And then I'm going to come back with the knight to e5. Let's see what he has to do against that. It does weaken the e4 square. That's the problem. So knight goes to c4 and I would need to meet it with bishop to c1. I move my bishop away. Rook e1, I go rook takes. Okay, e5. So black is desperate for counterplay, attacking my d4 pawn. So I think I would go f5 and try to occupy the e6 square. That looks good. There is a pin. Maybe I should move the king away just to be safe. Or f5 takes, takes, knight e5 is not really dangerous. Yeah, I'm just gonna go f5. I wanna get more space. c takes d, c takes d. I don't like the pins and checks. It's not very good if your king is vulnerable, but black's king is also vulnerable. I'm ready to give up the e file and maybe push f6. King h1 would be definitely on my list of things to do. All right, so this is what I was afraid of, a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where is this knight going? I was planning move the queen, queen to d1, for example. Yeah, queen d1, that's fine. My next move is knight e6. I don't see how much time I have. This is ridiculous. Oh, now I see. Okay. Three and a half minutes. That's good. Knight's here. So I was planning knight e6. What else do I have? Rook e8, I don't like. Knight e6. 
and goes to e6. That's a good place for my knight. Rook f7, I'm guessing, but then the queen is completely trapped there. Rook f7. All right. So, bishop on b6 is poorly defended. I need to, I think I want to secure my pawn and I'm going to play a bishop b2, a move I really don't want to do. Maybe I'm going to go king h1. That's always a useful move, king h1. I think g6 is just weakening his king. I'm going to push f6. I think I can do that. Yeah, so king h1 and maybe at some point I would drop, give up the pawn on d4 to open the diagonal for my bishop. I'm glad to that I'm playing such a young, talented uh, guy. I'm really enjoying the process. What is my next move? Bishop b2, maybe. I do, although I don't like it. I want my bishop someplace else, but I, knight d8. Okay. So he really hates my knight on e6 then. I, did, I didn't anticipate that move, to be honest. That's a good move. How do I keep my knight on e6? Mm, I'm afraid I, I cannot. So I go knight g5. I go knight g5. Rook e1. Hold on. If rook e1, rook e1, rook f5. Don't I have some back rank stuff? Like queen h5. And now I'm going to take with the queen. I don't want to calculate much. Rook is hanging, it has to go, and the queen is still trapped. And I want it to stay that way, so I'm going to go queen h4. And uh, h6 would not be a problem anymore, so queen h4. Queen h4. h6 is not a problem, because h takes g is not happening. What do I need to do? I just need my bishop in the game. So bishop a3 is the move I want to do. Rook f6 is bishop e7. If rook e8, I was planning f6. f6 takes and rook takes. I think that looks crushing. f6, f7 is coming. Knight to f7 loses. g takes f, rook takes f6. There's no check on e1. And yeah, I think it is winning. f6, g takes. Oh, g takes f. Oh my god, queen h6 mate in two. Okay. Instead of queen e1, knight f7, one, right? I don't know which moment. I'll, I'll, well, I want to finish the game properly. So what can black do? What is the threat? The threat is f7. Knight e7, f takes g. Um, rook f, rook moves, no. Knight e6, f7. I'm a little nervous. I'm, I'm very happy. Like when I play a very important game, I'm very. I had an experience that uh, my hands were so shaky that I couldn't even write down the move. I was playing my friend Valery, another Valery, Aveskulov, uh, from Ukraine, many many years ago, and my hands were shaking. I couldn't. I couldn't even. I had 30 seconds on my clock. I couldn't even write down the move. So I had to like take a deep breath and. Uh, and calm myself down, then I write down the move, and then I have like 10 seconds to, to make my move, and I won that game. So I'm, I'm having similar feelings now. Bishop to c7, okay. f7, knight f7, so he wants some back rank tricks, but e1 square is covered, so f7, knight f7, knight f7, king h7, I win a piece, knight back to g5, king h8. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't see an immediate crushing win. That's bad, by the way. F7 and rook takes F7. Is it good? I can also go bishop E7 now. Why is it helpful? I don't know, just go F7. Knight takes F7. King H7 and then moves the queen somewhere or bishop C1. Really? But e1 is controlled. Okay. Yeah, okay. So that was a good game. I'm very happy with the game. I showed all the ideas of the line. 
I, I hope my fellow uh, grandmasters are not <laughs> watching this one. All right. d4 d5 i'm gonna play very solid slav very solid slav exchange slav bishop g5 all right i think i recently checked this line so my plan is to go h6 and then i want to go queen b6 now i'm going e6 b2 is hanging sort of yeah, it's definitely hanging, so queen d2 makes sense. There are almost no games like this. Bishop g5 is a very interesting line, which became um, popular recently. The point is if knight f6, white just takes, and otherwise it's not that simple to finish the development. And now I'm just developing my pieces to natural squares. And we'll see what to do next g4 all right i think i was checking this position i'm gonna castle long that sounds like fun because i don't think white's gonna castle short now after g4 so i can just easily castle long king goes to b8 and knight goes to e7 and then my rook c8 is my next move a4 is at least stop oh king e2 interesting g4 is undefended can i use it somehow no rook c8 is a useful move definitely what's my next move what's my next move f6 and e5 i like that f6 e5 is my next move and g4 would be hanging queen d1 really does he want knight a4 but I take and I go e4. That seems like a win. So I'm just going e5. D, E, F, E. What is this? What is going on? Can't I just go e4? Yeah, I can. Bishop takes. Pawn takes. Knight takes. Now I just need to be just very careful with my um, conversion of my advantage. So only one pawn for my piece, queen b3. Usually the simplest way is to exchange everything you see. Let me see how I can accomplish that. I can give one check. Check is always nice. No, I take on f3. I take on f3. And now I'm going to go f5, knight c5. Why did... Hmm. I don't like the way I'm converting my advantage. Knight goes to c5. I'm just going to take on c5. Yep. Just going to take. Pawn takes. I'm going to give a check and ask the question to the king. Where is the king is going? b5. Oh my god. <coughs> What is happening? How can one blunder b5? It's such an obvious move. <clears throat> Queen f6. Just keep everything protected. Rook c5 is not a threat. c6. He wants to get to my king. I hate it. I'm playing without my knight. What do I do? b takes c, b takes c just loses. f4 e4 and then knight g6 probably that's the best way to do f4 i'm playing without my rook on h8 yet but i didn't see what i can do on the open file so here i was thinking to take take on c1 take on e3 queen takes i'm guessing and what do I do next? Pawn on b7, maybe even protecting my king. I don't like the way I'm converting the advantage. Not at all. I don't like it one bit. Rook d8 I want to play. Uh, 
finally Rook comes into the game. I need to centralize my pieces and that would be enough. Maybe Queen to d6, Knight to d5. Yeah, I was thinking if my Knight appears on f4, that would be game over. So Queen d6 now. I want to exchange Queens. Exchanging Queens just wins. Maybe King g2, but then I go Knight d5. King g1, I give check on g6, which looks very unpleasant. Yeah, the engine would give like, like a human win here is exchange the queens. That's it. That's how you win this one. What about, is he's not afraid of knight d5? Interesting. But I'm going to play a practical check on g6. And I'm going to simply trade queens. Or give checkmate very soon. Rook d d5. Let me calculate a little bit. Rook d5 seems like game over. Rook d5. If rook c8, it's king b7. If queen f4, it's queen d6, exchanging queens. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I think that's all I need to see. Rook d5. Rook d5. Queen d6, because king b7, I will be checkmated. Hold on, king b7, queen c7, king a8. He doesn't have a check. Maybe I just win simpler. So king b7, if rook c7, it's just king a8, and there is no check. So it's very impractical to go king b7 in a blitz, but I have enough time to figure this one out. King b7, queen c7, king a8. No checks with the queen whatsoever. Rook c7, king a8. Rook takes a7, king a7, queen c7, king a8 again. One check on a5, and I go king b7. I think king b7 just wins. So he would have to go queen e4, and that would exchange the queens. Okay, I'm just gonna take. If I blunder something, that would be a big, that would be really unpleasant. But I don't see what I blind. More technical is queen d6. I don't, like queen e4, he still can exchange the queens, I guess. Ah, no, I go queen h5 check, queen g5 check, and I take his rook on c1. That's the win I would go for. Yeah. Rook c7, king a8, queen f8. Oh my god. <laughs> rook c7 was winning for him king a8 queen f8 how did i forget about that one? Oh my goodness and if rook c7 king b6 it's a5 and and i'm being almost <laughs> oh my god so I'm, I'm very happy that i won this game but rook c7 king b8 is just terrible right King a8 was my plan, but this is just back rank mate. Oh no, woo! <laughs> so please don't make my, my mistakes. Just don't calculate the simplest, um, uh, the simplest way to convert the advantage is queen d6. That's it. Just exchange queens, zero calculation. Zero. And oh my goodness. And if king b7? Rook c7, if I go to b6, I think a5. Well, I, maybe I can, I don't know, king b5, queen c5. I stopped here because I've seen queen c4. Maybe I'm not checking. No, I am losing here. This is terrible and I lose my queen. And if I go to a5, I think it's just the same. It's just the same. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Yeah, I felt I completely forgot about queen f8. Hold on, can yeah, because here queen f8 doesn't make any sense. But rook c7 first, and I think I'm losing. Hold on, I'm gonna click on how do I request analysis? I'm gonna click on analysis. Uh, how do I run? I'm so used to stockfish, but yeah, that's that's all. Rook c7 was 
was winning for White. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay. But this is... And he had like three minutes. So maybe he just believed me. Or maybe he also didn't see Queen A8. Queen F8 check. Okay. I'm shocked. I know that I'm not supposed to do it. And yet uh, I was trying to do it anyway. 288 boards. Um, Alexander is saying. All right. Wow. Okay. Oof. Thank you for watching. I hope you like what you saw. Let me know in the comments. And uh, if you have any, any more questions, I'm happy to answer them. Although I do have some technical difficulties. One second. Yeah, maybe I would do one more puzzle rush because I, because I need to come down, I guess. I need to come down. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Just gonna do one more puzzle rush. And then we, mm, we call it, as they say, we call it a day. And Valeri, please tell me how did you finish? Uh, let's see what is the score in the match. What is the score? Yeah, Ukraine is winning. Okay. Uh, how do I check this game? I think I could, I could watch this game. There used to be a button that I could click, but I didn't see how I can click on the game. I think click on the players. Not sure how to watch it. Okay. All right. One more puzzle rush and uh, and that would be it. You don't remember this chess Tao, my friend Valeri. Uh, we played um, Vasilishin Memorial in Lviv. And near the window, I was black. We had Sicilian with Queen E1, Queen G3. I think that was the tournament I got my first, uh, my first norm. Chess Tao, by the way, Valeria Veskulov. I recommend a friend of mine, good coach. And a good player, of course. And I was black and I won against you, but I was shaking all the game. Maybe it was not that, uh, 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 that, uh, that clear. In the center, small boards. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. Let's see what is going on here. Anton is 2900 against Denis Makhnov. Hold on. Ah, no. Yeah, against 2900. So this is like a very decent game now going on. 30 seconds. What is going on? This, how can Rook appear on e6? What is this? So King's Indian without d6. I never seen that one. Oh, maybe that's the point. Okay, this is very weird. Yeah, Anton is in huge trouble. I think he's just lost. Desperate move by Anton. What did they do in the previous game? In the previous game, Anton won. That is good. Okay, so Team Ukraine is winning. Uh, did I refresh your memory, uh, Valery? We'll see. I will not play 10 plus 2 portion. That is way too long. Sorry. I, uh, I, think, we, they, I think they took the, uh, the score together, so we're good to go. All right, one more puzzle rush, and maybe you have a few more questions. I would be happy to answer them. Here we go. What is this? Taking the queen or something? Taking the bishop. All right, back rank. Too many back rank puzzles. I hate it. I know this topic. That's good. Take the knight. Mate in one. Mate in one. Uh, oh, where's mate in one? Check and check. And takes, wasting my time. Bishop a8, what is this? Mate in one. Uh, check and takes. Mm, mate. Mm, takes wins the queen. Mm. Really? e7, just promoting. Queen takes. Promoting the queen. Bishop e5 first, and then take the rook. Um, rook b1 and take the bishop. Um, check and take the rook. Knight f4 and take the queen or checkmate depending on blacksmith. Mate in two, check, mate. Um, queen e6 looks logical and where's the mate? There's the mate with the rook, okay. Uh, here just winning the rook, I guess. Oh, really? Oh, this is 
fantastic. This is a well-known combination. Knight c6, knight e7, knight c8. Uh, the queen, knight e2, knight f2, again back rank. All right. Knight d6, what is this? Rook b1, distracting the queen, then taking the bishop. Rook is trapped. Not yet. And now it is. Um, a5 first I have to go and then I push b pawn. What's this? Again back rank problem. Uh, take on e7, take on f6, take on f6. Uh, alignment. Still alignment and taking. Uh, check and oh. And then e6 is hanging. Boom and boom and boom. Okay. Uh, what's this? This is h2. Okay, this is h2. How do I promote? I promote like this. Rook on h3 is bad. Bishop on b2 is lost. Oh, I just go here. You cannot trap me. All right, knight to f4. And um, what do I do? Where's the win? Where's my win? My queen is hanging, takes, takes, rook g4, no. Mm, rook g2 and then takes, I still don't see a win. Ah. I want my win. Maybe queen g6? g3? No. Where's my win? Yeah, I wasted too much time, so I'm not gonna score well now. I don't see a win, so I'm just gonna take. And I'm gonna play queen g6, I guess. No. How do I win this one? I take the queen, yeah. Check. Takes. No. Takes was wrong. King c7, I guess. Yeah. What's this? I go to e7. And I take on d6 and I run away screaming. Okay. Rook g2. Rook. No. Wait a minute. Wait, where's the mate again? G8, king h2, queen f4, queen f3, yes, of course. Queen f3. Oh, I don't have a rock. I don't like it. Just promote and just move the king away. Pawn ending, is it winning? Really? Okay. Wow. And uh, just push the c pawn. Just push it. Just come back. All right, checkmate. Uh, there should be some checkmate king e2. No. What else can I do? What else can I do? King e2. No. It's, that's not a big thing. Really? That's fascinating. Wow. And now pawn takes because I need a pass pawn. Just nice geometry. Okay. Uh, stalemate, I guess, is the topic here. Um, is there a mate? I don't think there's a mate. Just have to repeat the position. Ah, oh, no, there's mate. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Takes. One more check. And then, I don't know, maybe check from here. No, that was wrong. And last, last position. Uh, F7, A8. Poo, poo, poo. The queen is trapped. Queen D8. And now... Um, Ah, I was thinking for too long. All right. Okay. Thank you for watching. And uh, I would, uh, I'm so far succeeding in uh, uh, doing my uh, uh, streams on a regular basis. I hope you're enjoying it. And uh, I don't see any, any more questions coming up. So thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Tell your friends about it. Um, like the video comment on it and uh, take care no not take care yet hold on a second um i need to end my stream but i lost the i uh, wait a second wait a second yeah um i'm still getting used to it it seems that it's easy it's not easy at all all right uh thanks again for watching um I know that I will not play 10 plus 2 portion. And um, th thank you, Alexander, for 
organizing Team Ukraine. It's been one hour stream. Oh, wow, you're still here. Thank you. I'm hoping you like what you saw. Check the description of the video. Take care and see you. Goodbye, my friends.